Rockies Amity Campus for worship today with special music guest Doris Rains. Let's welcome our host today and Pastor Rob Walters. I am so glad you're here. We are in week five of a series called 167. You see, there's 168 hours in every week and we give one to God in worship. What do we do with the other 167? It's also Mother's Day. Now we all have different experiences with mothers or mother figures. Some are good and some are bad, but hopefully what we learned from a loving parent in some form was what it means to follow the golden rule. As Christians, how do we apply that golden rule? I'm so glad you're here. So let's kick it off as Doris shares with us, when love is found. Mother's Day can be a tough day for many people. Perhaps your relationship with mom was never fully developed, or perhaps it was a painful relationship where you had to place boundaries to keep yourself safe. Perhaps your mom has passed away and you're still grieving her loss. Or maybe you're one of the fortunate few that has a great relationship with mom today. No matter what our relationship is, God desires that our family relationships are built solely on love. So let's sing together as Doris leads us, Happy the Home Where God Is There. Hi, my name is Rob Walters, and I serve as one of your pastors for just three more weeks. We are in week five of a series we're calling 167 Hours. We're considering how we spend our week. We start with 168 hours. We use one for worship, and we have 167 left. How do we use that time for good? In our first week, we looked at that first hour of the week in worship, and we considered the role that trials play in our faith journey. In week two, Pastor Ken discussed temptation and challenged us to overcome our circumstances and really develop community with each other. In week three, we considered what it means to watch our words, what we say, to be slow to anger, slow to speak, and quick to listen. 
last week in week four, we considered what it means to get in the wheelbarrow to make sure our beliefs and our work or our deeds go together. If you missed any of those, I want to encourage you to check it out on our YouTube channel when you have a moment. We've been studying the book of James together. James was a leader in the early church. And today, we turn to the final week of this series, a week where we consider what it means to live the golden rule. But before we go to the golden rule, which is taught to us by some of our moms, I want to take a moment to recognize that there is a secular holiday today. It's Mother's Day, of course. And I'll begin by saying that I hope you have an awesome relationship with your mom. Maybe you and your mom have modeled together that golden rule and treat each other with love. If so, I want to encourage you to go celebrate that. However, (laughs) research tells us that Mother's Day and Father's Day, for that matter, are among the most skipped days in worship attendance. Why is that? Well, it's the same reason that we don't do a lot of focus on secular holidays like Mother's Day in the church environment. You see, for some, Mother's Day and Father's Day are among the most painful days of the year. For some, that day, it's a reminder of grief after a loved one has passed. If that's you, my prayer today is that you remember that we worship a God that promises comfort when we mourn. For some, today is a reminder of a broken relationship. If that's you, my prayer today is that you would be the change, that you would be the one to model the golden rule for others. For some, though, today is just a reminder of loss. If that's you, I want to encourage you to use that moment not to hide away from other people, but to do something good. My prayer for you is that you would model love for someone else today. And when you do, you allow God to work, even in the midst of the loss. In light of this significance of this day for some, I'd like to take just a moment to pray. Would you pray with me? God, we celebrate the moms. We celebrate the foster moms. We celebrate the stand-in moms. We celebrate the dads acting as moms, the neighbor who became mom, the grandparent filling in as mom, and the social worker acting like mom to a child with no able parents. God, we lament the broken relationships with mom figures. We grieve the loss of moms who have passed. We feel the deep anxiety and tension for those caring for an aging or ill mom today. And God, we lament missing out on that moment of gathering with a mom-like figure in a worship space such as this one today. But most importantly, God, we ask for your comfort and your peace in our most broken relationships. Help us to live the rest of our 167 hours showing the golden rule to others in how we choose to love. Amen. We've been studying James, who was writing in the Greek language to early Jewish Christians. They believe in Christ, but they're having trouble with their methods, with their 167 remaining hours. So in James chapter 2, he begins with a short story in verse 1 through 5. Will you read this with me? My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly 
And if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. But you have dishonored the poor. That's hard to hear. But let's be honest, we live in a world today that judges a lot on appearance, on skin color, and on clothes that we wear. We have multi-billion dollar industries that are all geared around how we appear to other people. We sometimes work hard to surround ourselves with nice neighborhoods. We ensure that we don't live near the homeless shelter or ensure that the shelter doesn't come near us. And we separate ourselves as much as possible. James was speaking into this moment. How did Christians love each other? James scripture goes on to reference the golden rule. Will you read this with me? You do well. If you really fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. See, there's the golden rule, a rule that many of us know from a variety of sources, even outside scripture You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But to love others, we have to leave the judgment behind. Nearly all of the people that I visit that do not go to church, they often offer the same piece of feedback. They love Jesus, but they don't like the church. When asked why, their response is often, well, Christians talk about love, but don't actually practice it. Truth be told, all of us, preachers included, are probably guilty of that at some point. That really hurts to hear. But unfortunately, it's often true. I bet if we took a survey today amongst all of us and asked how many of you have been hurt by the church or by Christian people at some point in your life, there would be a whole lot of in-person and virtual hands go up. Our role as church people is to model the golden rule always everywhere, and to our best ability. In the James scripture, he quotes from Matthew, and he references the golden rule. It comes from Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Would you read this with me? In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. Do you see what the call here to us is? It is to do good. It is to treat others well. It is to be active and do something. In Methodist lingo, we might say it this way. We would say, go transform the world for good. Christians, though, you know, we don't corner the market on the golden rule. It's been part of holy text for a variety of faith traditions and multiple people throughout generations. For years, when I was serving as a pastor in Kansas City, I would attend an annual table of faiths. This table of faiths was a gathering of people from multiple faith traditions. We would come together in one place. Most would wear their clerical kind of garb. And we would gather and we would share a meal together 
And then afterwards, we would worship utilizing snippets from each, uh, each of our faith traditions. It was an amazing moment to connect with people who were strikingly different yet somehow familiar. The theme of the table of faiths was honoring the sacred in all. You see, when you study, you begin to see that we have lots of differences with people of other faith traditions. But at the same time, we have very key similarities. One of those is this golden rule. Here's a couple other examples. Perhaps if you were one of my Buddhist friends that I met at the table of faiths, you might share the golden rule from your sacred text in this way. You would say, hurt not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. If we went to a different faith tradition, someone else I might have sat at at the table of faith, perhaps our Confucianism friends, they would say, do not do to others what you would not like yourself. Those that practice Hinduism, as I gathered with them, what I heard them share as their golden rule was this, do nothing to others you would not have them do unto you. And there are, not, there are Jewish brothers and sisters. Those who practice Judaism, they might say it this way, what is hateful to you, do not do to your fellow man. Then there's a faith tradition perhaps you've never heard of before or unfamiliar with. I met those who practiced a Zoroastrian faith at the table of faiths. Their golden rule goes something like this, that nature only is good when it shall not do unto another whatever is not good for its own self. You see, no matter where you might stand in this range of faith traditions, we begin to see that we have a lot of similarities, especially around the golden rule. But as we review these, do you notice one key difference? In Matthew, in our Christian sacred text in the Bible, we are called to do to others as we would have done to us. The other faith traditions we just discussed, though, they're on the flip side of that. Did you notice that all of them refer to not doing to others what we do not want done to us? There's a clear difference here in most traditions, admonition to avoid harm is the teaching. But in Christianity, it's different. In our tradition, we are called not just to avoid harm, but to do good. This is a key distinction. And the reason we challenge you to use those other 167 hours. Here are some action steps, some ways to live this out on your own. Number one, if you need support, get it. Now, I've included this every week of this series because we are in hard times and people are struggling. You can't do good if you're not okay to start with. So I want to encourage you, attend Mental Health Mondays. We stream that every Monday night in all of our streaming locations. You can also call us at either campus for some support, some encouragement, or some prayer. We may also be able to connect you with a local counselor if that might be helpful to you. But if you need support, get it. Number two. I want to encourage you to worship every week at one of our sites. Now, at our downtown campus, outdoor worship will be happening each week through the end of May on Sunday mornings at 11. Then in June, something new happens. In June, there will be two limited indoor worship experiences at 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock, and then outside on the lot at 5.30 in the evening. Now here at the Amity campus, you might be wondering what it will take to worship in this space again together. You see, we've missed seeing you here. 
And our bishop has recently given us some new guidelines and the ability to begin opening. So we are working hard here to think about how you may be able to return to worship in this indoor space. Now, it will feel different. We'll be spread out in the space, not seated right next to people that don't live in our household. We'll be wearing our masks. We'll be keeping that distance. There won't be things like coffee and there won't be children's ministry right at the beginning. In addition, we really won't see much inside the building. We're going to try to follow all the CDC recommendations and do everything we need to do to keep you safe, but to get you back here in this space again. Now, for those that may not be comfortable with that, we're also working to offer you a simultaneous experience in the next building so you might be able to spread out even more and worship in that space while at the same time people are worshiping in this space. A third option will that we will continue to stream worship into your homes on Saturday nights and again on Sunday morning. And to top it all off, we're going to continue offering you the opportunity to engage in outdoor worship. We're working out the details to that plan right now. We hope to let you know more in the next couple weeks, but look for a way that we might be able to worship together again. No matter which site you worship at, worshiping every week together is so important as it's how we live out the golden rule. As we think about these action steps, number three is don't just avoid harm, do good. It's not enough to be passive. It's not enough just to watch other people. Get involved, get involved. One such way is the Habitat Build coming up in June. Help end homelessness for a family. Make a difference, sign up, work socially distanced with your mask on and do everything you can to stay safe, but do good for others. Friends, may you practice the golden rule. May you love your neighbor as yourself and do good. I want to give you an opportunity to send your prayer request in. We're going to put a phone number on the screen, 208-718-COTR. Those numbers are 2687. This is a way for you to receive some prayer. Friends, I want to invite you to text the, that in. It comes directly to me. I will either respond to you right away, or if I'm working with people in worship, it'll be immediately after. But I want to invite you to send your prayer request in so that we might be able to pray for you today. It's one more way that we do good together. Let's pray. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to do good, to support one another, to worship together, and God, to live out this golden rule. God, call us not just to avoid harm, but to truly do good in the world around us. And holy God, hear us as we pray together the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's a time to give our gifts towards the other 167 hours of the week. Your gifts matter. We want to invite you to give using the information you'll see on the screen in just a moment. You'll be able to give by mail. You can give on our website. You can also give by text to give. But your gifts transform the world. As we give our gifts, we'll receive the gift of music. In this musical reminder that when we want to live the golden rule, the best way to do that is to remember that I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus 
Before you take off for those other 167 hours, I wanna invite you to remember these things. First, be in worship every week. We have online worship on Saturdays at six or on Sundays at 10. But we also have outdoor worship every week at the Amity campus on Sundays beginning at 10 o'clock. If you're in a more vulnerable category, worship from home. But I'm only gonna be your pastor for three more weeks. So I would very much love to see you at outdoor worship if you feel safe coming any Sunday. For the next three weeks, we're going to share a short mini sermon series together. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite memories with you from the last four years together. I'd love to see you at Outdoor Worship each week, so come and join us. Secondly, I want to invite you to sign up for Habitat for Humanity. Remember, it's coming up on June 19th. You can sign up to build a house in small groups. Sign up on our website today. As we close worship today, we realize that the beauty in our world exists in God, in our relationships, and in our faith community. It exists all around us. So let's sing together for the beauty of the earth. It's been a joy to be here today. Would you receive this blessing as you leave? As you go back out into the world to experience those 167 remaining hours, live the golden rule. Treat others as you want to be treated. Live with patience and gentleness and love. And when you do, you receive the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and all of God's people said, Amen. I'm so glad.